Everybody wants us keys players to play underneath them during prayer, offering, altar call, but what the heck are we supposed to play while they're talking? In this video, I wanna teach you a simple keys progression that you can use in any key, so no matter when you're asked to underscore somebody during church, you're gonna have at least one progression that you can count on. Let me teach it to you. In this video, I'm gonna use a pad and a piano sound from our Sunday Keys template for main stage, but if you don't have Sunday Keys, you can use any nice pad and piano combination that you have. If you'd like to check out Sunday Keys and actually follow along with the exact sounds I'm using, there's a link in the description so you can pause the video, get Sunday Keys, and then jump back in to follow along. Now, I'm gonna play this progression in the key of C, but I'm gonna try and teach it in such a way that you're gonna be able to transpose it and use this progression in any other key that you'd like as well. So to start off with, let me play through it, give you an idea of how it sounds. This underscoring progression has two main parts that you can sort of move back and forth between. So let me play it for you. So this progression, like I said, is in two parts and it sort of has a right hand melodic part that's present in both pieces. And then the bass notes are sort of defining the chords a little bit differently. And I wanna explain sort of the idea behind why these two progressions work so well together and how you can use them during times of underscoring, prayer, altar call at church to highlight and amplify what your pastor or the person speaking is doing. So to start off with, this first progression starts with the one chord. We're in the key of C, so that's a nice C chord with a five on top in the melody. And let me just quickly play this melody part for you. This is present in both the A part and the B part of this progression. So it goes like this. And then you can add some more motion as you'd like to add a little more energy to the underscoring. So that's pretty much what your right hand is gonna be doing throughout both parts of this progression. So it's really the left hand bass notes that are defining these chords as major or minor. So like I said, we're gonna do this progression in the key of C. So we start off with the one, which is a nice C chord. Now the one always feels like home in modern worship music. It's got this really landed sort of feel. It's very grounded. It's not uh, super out there. It just sort of blends in. And this is a great place to start because you can go to an uplifting place from here or you can go to somewhere that seems a little bit more somber. So we're starting with the one and that G, the five on top. And then we're going to the four which is still a nice uplifting sort of hopeful space. It's not a super distracting or big change. It's just a nice simple transition. And then we're going right back to the one. We're playing the three now in the right hand in that melody part, that's E in the key of C. So notice that we went from home, the one, to the four, and then right back to the one. So we went from home to just a little bit somewhere off of that and then right back. And when you're just starting to underscore someone, you really don't wanna draw a lot of attention to yourself and kind of coming back to home base pretty quickly uh, establishes the progression as sort of safe as something you can just sort of feel more than really pay attention or listen to. So going from here to there and then right back to the one. So. C chord. And then we're going to the five. So that's a G bass note for me. And we're playing this melody in the right hand. And those four chords, two of the four are actually the one chord. So we spend 50% of our time at that nice, safe, warm feeling one chord. And we leave it and then we come right back to it. 
And the great thing about doing that, and this progression is in general, is that pretty much at any time you can go somewhere else if you need to. And in this video, we're talking about this B, this alternate progression. The great thing about having that C chord just back and forth, back and forth, is that anytime we need to change up what we're doing, emphasize what the speaker is saying, we can do so at the very next chord. So we're playing through this A progression. progression right here. So it feels similar, it still has a lot of familiarity to it, but the chords are subbed out. So that home chord, that one chord, is completely removed from the progression. So let me walk you through the differences, and then I'll explain why I think this can have an impact during times of underscoring. So to start off with, instead of playing the major one, we play the minor six, so an A minor chord. We're doing that exact same melody part in the right hand, but an A bass note, so it defines it as an A minor chord. So while the major one feels hopeful, uh, familiar, uplifting, the minor six feels somber and serious. It's got a little bit more tension, a little bit more darkness behind it. So we've taken the most comfortable familiar chord and substituted it out for a minor feel. And then we're going to the four, to the F chord, just like we did in the A progression. So this is nice and familiar. It's not something that is sort of expected. It feels just like in the original progression. But then, instead of going back to the one, we're gonna play this nice C over E chord. So in the right hand, we're playing C. In the left hand, we're not quite landing at home because we're playing an alternate bass note. So it feels like it's just a little bit of tension because it's not the true one, it hasn't fully landed. And then we're going again to that five chord, G. So to play the whole B progression again for you, Anytime you need to, you can end on the C. So these two progressions share a lot in common. They're very similar structurally, but one feels uplifting, familiar, and warm, and the other has a lot of tension, a lot of pull. So when you have these two progressions that you can seamlessly switch between, you're able to really easily and dynamically follow whoever you are underscoring on stage. Just understand the different feel and emotional impact that these two progressions have. So take some time, get comfortable with these in the key of C, and then transpose them to other keys. So I'll play this now for you in the key of F. So now that I've taught you the basics of this progression and how you can use it to follow your speaker dynamically, take some time to learn it, memorize it, and get comfortable with it in the key of C, and then you can start playing it in other keys as well. I always like to have a progression or two in my back pocket anytime I walk on stage. So if the speaker goes somewhere unexpected, or if I have to play longer than I was planning on, or fill a transition between songs while the band is figuring out what's going on, I have something that I can just comfortably shift right into. 
With enough practice, you can even get your band to follow you through these progressions. It's really quick and easy to teach them these because there's just a couple differences between the A progression and the B progression. You can even teach your band to listen for that first chord and follow you. If it's a major chord, they know that you're on the A progression. If it's a minor chord, they know that you're on the B progression. So leave a comment and let me know if this progression is something you plan to use during your live worship services. I'd also love to do more videos of this type. So if you have a go-to progression, leave a comment and let me know what it is. And then I might pick some of those progressions to feature in future videos. Also be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss our next tutorial. Thanks for watching and have a great day.